It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. When we apologise, we apologise because we understand and know our intentions and we're hoping that others will recognise that. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Hello, it's Dr. Justin Coulson. I'm here with Kylie, my wife, mum to our six kids. I'm the founder of happyfamilies.com.au and the author of a bunch of books about making your family happier, including 10 Things Every Parent Needs to Know. If you're a parent who is time poor and wants answers right now, we have an answer for you about how to get the kids to apologise when they do the wrong thing and how to restore relationships at home when siblings fight with one another. Uh, Mrs. Happy Families, Kylie, did you as a child ever have uh, any significant fights with your two sisters? <laughs> <laughs> what sibling doesn't? Yeah, it's kind of like that, isn't it? I really would love to meet someone who can say no. Well, only children. Only children have never fought with siblings because they don't have any. <laughs> so, so we came across some research recently that I think is fascinating, really important and worth spending a few minutes on. This was a study from the University of North Carolina and um, it was published in the Journal of Experimental Psychology looking at kids and apologies. And I think that it's fascinating, this idea that there are some parents who absolutely insist that the kids need to apologise to one another when they do the wrong thing and other parents who take a completely different tack. Uh, when you were being raised by your parents, Kylie, were you gently encouraged to apologise or were you told to go to your sister right now and say sorry? Um, I think we were both standing in front of them. Right, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, and I was told to apologise immediately. Right. And did you look at her and say, uh, you know what? My little sister, I did the wrong thing and my heartfelt apology. Will you forgive me? I think I was looking at my feet at the time and with my teeth firmly gritted together, <laughs> I was just saying, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Forgiveness is obviously an essential part of maintaining an ongoing and positive relationship. And these researchers, they had a whole bunch of kids between the age of five and 14 And essentially, they looked at how they went with their apologies. And what they found is that the kids who are most likely to apologize are the ones who have perspective, the ones who have empathy, the ones who can pause and say, I can imagine how that must have felt for my sibling or this other person in this interaction. And because I've got that capacity to have that perspective, I can say sorry much more easily. What I think is really interesting about this is that there's actually two sides to an apology. There's an opportunity to recognise where we've done wrong and to um, do what we can to restore the relationship. But there's also the other side where forgiveness needs to be offered. And both are really important for us if we want to have good, strong, healthy relationships. Oh, so there's a couple of things that we can really pick up on from what you've just said, Kylie. First of all, if we look at the findings of this study, the research has found that children are more likely to forgive someone if they've apologised. I, th- I think that's really important. But what's curious to me is other research that highlights that if a child says sorry and they're not forgiven, so let's say I do the wrong thing to you and I recognise that I've done the wrong thing. So I say, Kylie, I'm so very sorry. And then you say to me, I don't forgive you. I'm holding a grudge. I'm really upset. I do not like what you've done and I'm not going to let it I'm not going to let it fly. I'm really upset. This study, a different one published in the Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin, it's a University of Queensland study. Michael Ty is the researcher. And he found that when people do not receive forgiveness after they've apologised, they actually internalise the belief that they are the victim, not the person that they did the wrong thing to. So I could be horrible to you. You're the victim. Then I apologise, and if you don't forgive me, I actually feel like I'm now the victim, and you deserved what you got because you're the kind of person that doesn't forgive when people apologise. Isn't that fascinating? That actually is really fascinating because I think I may have been in that situation once or twice myself, and I've never thought about it like that. What do you mean? Well, there there have obviously been times where I've done something wrong and it's upset somebody and I've apologised and they've just decided to hold on to it forever. Right. And, and it's just left me kind of feeling really hard done by. But I think it also highlights just the different perspective that we take because when we apologise, we apologise because we understand and know our intentions and we're hoping that 
others will recognize that. But when we're hurt by other people, we just see their actions and don't have the ability to recognize their intentions and so judge them for their actions. And and, and that judgment is a lot harsher because we don't see their heart. We don't understand their intention. Yeah. So that goes back to what we were talking about last week on the podcast, the fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error basically is I want you to judge me by my intentions, even if my actions are bad, because you know, I'm trying to be a good person. Really messes up relationships when people judge you by your actions, not your intentions. You feel like you're now the victim and that's kind of where you're going. Um, The other thing that the researchers have found when they're talking about kids is kids are much more likely to forgive if they have empathy and perspective for somebody. And they're also much more likely to forgive if that ch- if if they have theory of mind, which kind of leads into having that empathy or perspective anyway, which I think is a really important thing. We've talked about this a lot on the podcast, theory of mind. There's a an entire webinar that I've done about theory of mind and little kids and their big feelings and how hard it is to understand what's going on for someone else. This is just not something that they do very easily. So uh, right after the break, let's talk about how to help the kids to apologize in meaningful ways that encourage perspective and empathy and, and actual forgiveness so that relationships can be restored. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Imagine a home where discipline got results without anyone having to feel bad or in trouble. The Do's and Don'ts of Discipline is a webinar to help parents set limits with love, compassion and humanity. Find it now at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now and everybody is wanting to know how to help their children apologise. Well, you can get them to say, I'm sorry, in which case they'll spit it across the room with their eyes glaring at their sibling. But I think that there are better things that we can do, Kylie, and it's actually not rocket surgery. It's doable. Well, the research paper actually talked about two things parents can do to help children restore relationships. And the first one was just this acknowledgement that children are really capable of discerning between an insincere or a sincere apology. Um, And that for an apology to be acceptable, there needs to be an acknowledgement of why they're apologising. And this is something that you and I have talked about on the podcast before. So can you talk us through what would be the appropriate steps or foundations for a sincere apology? Yeah. And this this segues or dovetails so neatly with the second area that the researchers highlighted, which was uh, helping kids to understand perspective, empathy, Mm -hmm. which means that they need to have at least the the capacity to sit with you. So a, a couple of things. Number one, it's very, very unusual to be able to get an apology to be meaningful when emotions are hot, when everyone's in the heat of the moment, when everybody's angry at their sibling and they're saying, she's a bad sport or he took my homework or whatever it is. It's very, very unusual that kids are going to say, actually, I've done the wrong thing. You're right. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. That, That just doesn't happen. So the first thing is, Have the conversation when emotions are cool. Everyone's taken a step back, had a bit of a breather. We can sit down with our kids and say, hey, you know what happened about five, ten minutes ago? How'd that make you feel? And how did that make your brother feel? Or how did that make your dad feel or your grandma or whoever the offended party is? And what we're doing there is we're creating some psychological distance. Emotions are nice and cool. But what we're doing straight away is stepping into perspective. We're stepping into this thing that theory of mind aids, the ability to see how somebody else has been affected by what we did. It's creating empathy. And once we've had that conversation, how do you think that mum felt or how do you think that dad felt or how do you think that your sibling felt when that happened? So sometimes kids kind of, you know what it's like, Kylie, you've watched all of our kids do this. We ask them a question like that and they go, no, no. And they shrug their shoulders and they pout and they stare at the floor and they don't want to have the conversation. It, it, and then what that really means is that you're having the conversation prematurely. They're still too upset. There's still too much going on for them to be able to deal with it effectively. They're, they're simply too emotional. But you will get to a point where they'll start to talk about things. So leave the room, come back in five minutes and say, hey, let's try again. We didn't do so well last time. How'd they feel? How'd you feel? How'd I feel? And you want to get a 360 perspective, not just the victim, but everyone. Because when there is that kind of conflict, everyone is, to one degree or another, a victim of some kind. The family has been fractured because of the conflict. And we're trying to restore all these relationships. And this is where it gets really interesting. This is kind of like the explore, explain, empower, the three E's that I talk about all the time. We're exploring, how did you feel? How did everyone else feel? Then we do a quick explanation. You know, when this happens, our family really 
feels kind of horrible, doesn't it? And then we empower. What do you think would be the best thing to do from here? The great thing about asking that question is that the kids typically don't feel overly cornered, but they're usually fairly willing to say, okay, I need to apologize. I need to make it right. I need to fix things up. And and then, Kylie, we just step into what a really great apology is. So in our house, we usually use your four-step approach to an apology. Would you like to talk us through that? Yeah, okay, uh, really simple. Four steps. Number one, I'm sorry. Number two, because. Number three, here's what it did to you. And number four, will you forgive me? It's, it's really that simple. So let's say that uh, two of the kids are having a fight um, and, and, and we – chat with them and they agree that they need to apologize or one of them needs to apologize to the other one she'll say i'm sorry annie for yelling at you and calling you names it made you feel horrible will you forgive me and it's really that simple Uh, it needs to be like a, a six second apology those four steps the words are so important i'm sorry and then explaining what you did and how it affected the other person with a follow-up question right at the end, will you forgive me? And this is the critical thing because quite often when somebody says, I'm sorry, what's the obvious and immediate response that so many people will give? They usually say, it's okay. Right. And, and the thing is, most often it's not okay. It's not okay that they called you a name. It's not okay that they stole something, hit you, or did whatever it was that they did. And when we say it's okay in response to an I'm sorry, what we're actually doing is rather than forgiving the person, we're brushing over the act. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We're almost saying the act was not acceptable in the moment. But now that you've acknowledged it, I'm going to allow the act to have occurred. I'm going to accept that it occurred and move on. And I just don't think that's the right message that we want to be encouraging our kids to absorb and 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 to even perpetuate. What we want to do instead is say, what has happened is wrong, but we forgive the person and then we move on. It's a different process. I think the two most powerful steps for me when I listen, even just listening to you talk about this now, is this acknowledgement of how it's actually impacted the person. What I've done has actually really hurt them. And and by us being able to acknowledge or our children being able to acknowledge how it's hurt them really validates their feelings. And then to, to ask that question, will you forgive me? It shows a level of humility. It shows an acknowledgement that I've actually fractured the relationship that we share and I want to restore it. That's the critical element, and I'm so glad that you've picked up on that. Ultimately, will you forgive me is an act of humble recognition, and that changes relationships. That's where we teach our kids what a true apology really is. Well, I am sorry that I'm not right there with you, honey, right now. I, I don't know if I need to forgive you for that or not. It's it's kind of <laughs> self-inflicted, isn't it? Uh, but, but hopefully for any parent who's got kids who kind of get stuck into each other every now and again or who make missteps, and that's pretty much all of us, hopefully these ideas around teaching kids how to better apologise will be helpful. And it works with kids from about the age of two or three all the way up to fully grown adults and beyond. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. If you'd like more info about making your family happier, you can find it at happyfamilies.com.au. Hold up. 